Hey everybody, it's Julianne. It's Saturday. Uh, you are once again with me. I'm in my Brooklyn kitchen and this is Baking with Friends and today we are making lemon vanilla pound cake with my wonderful friend Sudeshna Rini who is going to join me. Ah, oh, there she is shortly. Um, if you are just joining us, uh, you want to go into 350 degrees and start getting out all your ingredients. So we've got flour, we've got sugar, we've got eggs, we've got vanilla. Hi. Excellent. <laughs> that was seamless. I was thinking to myself, okay, here we go. It's going to take a second, but perfect. Um, so I'm just telling everybody, reading your preheating your oven to 350 degrees. Uh, we've got flour, sugar, salt, butter, eggs, vanilla, and uh, lemon zest, and club soda. I have a question about the lemon zest. I thought yes. it would be way easier than it is to do. What's the trick? To, to doing lemon zest? Yeah, so I'm uh, using I, paper. Yep, I and, use a mic, so I use about, I use it. I use a microplane, which has smaller um, grates, but you can use, if you don't have this, if you've got a regular grater, like a cheese grater, or like a box yeah. grater, um, yeah. you want to use the smaller side of a box yes. grater, or, or, I mean, if you use the big holes, you'll just have really large pieces of zest. Yeah. And the hard part about zesting a lemon, I think, as you probably found, is that you only want to zest until you see the white part. Don't go past the white part because you're going to get um, that flavoring. It's very sour, um, the pith flavor from the white part, and that's what we don't want. And a lot of people think that you get most of your lemon flavor from lemon juice, and that's not true. It's the zest that contains all the flavor because of the oils from the lemon. It's all on the skin. Uh, so if you're not using organic lemons, wash your lemon really well because <laughs> You want to make sure you don't have any pesticides or anything like that in it. Um, be really thorough. I hope everyone does that if, if you're not buying. Um, even when you're buying organic products, a good wash. Everyone, a good wash. Especially in these days. And hello, Christine. And hello, Mary. Um, just talking about all the ingredients we have. Bust out your stand mixer. Bust out your hand mixer. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started uh, on this lemon vanilla pound cake. So like the name in Sue's, we are making what is called a pound cake. And the reason why it has a name is because normally it has a pound of butter in it. Oh boy. <laughs> and usually you make that in a loaf pan or you make it in a giant butt pan. Today I'm halving this recipe so that way we can pretend we're saving ourselves some calories from not using a pound of butter, but also to make it a little bit um, sizable. Uh, for those of us who don't have like six or eight people living at home with you, right? But like anything, you can freeze this, you can save it for later. You don't necessarily have to eat it all in one go unless you want to, and there's no judgment in that because we're in quarantine, so <laughs> feel free. But today I'm using, and you've probably seen this before um, if we've been following you for weeks, I'm using a two pan. This is a six inch pan. It's normally used for like angel food cake or chiffon cakes. That's why it has these feet at the bottom. But it doesn't matter. For this purpose, I'm going to use it for today's baking. Um, it's pretty well depth, as you can see, because we're going to have a lot of batter, even though I cut this recipe in half. So if you want to create a bunch cake, which is a really larger um, cake with a hole in the middle, then double the recipe, and that'll give you enough to create a larger bunch cake if you're planning on making it for lots of people, which possibly you can be. Um, if you don't have this kind of pan, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, a regular six inch, a seven inch uh, pan will be okay. The removable bottom ones, the ones that don't have removable bottoms. Uh, if you don't have any of those, standard loaf pan will work here uh, as well. Or if you don't even have a loaf pan, bust out your cake pan, eight inch, nine inch pan, you're sorted. Um, but that's where we're gonna go today. And so we're gonna go ahead and grease this pan today. I'm greasing with butter. I have one question. So yes. mine is a six inch pan. The yes. cake pan. That should that be should fine. Be yeah, that should be fine. And then the butter. Yeah, I left the butter out, but it's not completely thawed. Should I microwave it? It's soft, but not liquid. Hmm. It just, it doesn't, you don't want it to be liquid. You want it to be soft. Okay. Not, it doesn't okay. have to be rock hard. And it will, we'll actually fluff it a little bit more as we're going to take a few more minutes to grease the pan and such. So if you feel like it's still too hard, stick it by your oven 
not like on top of it, buy it, and the heat from your oven will help soften it a little bit more. Uh, you don't want it melted. Though. So everybody else that is with us, I am taking my stick of butter. Uh, you can also use spray if you have cooking spray at home. And you're going to grease the entire pan. If you've got any, whichever pan you've got, I'm just going to go ahead and grease this whole thing with butter, including the bottoms. If you're using bottoms, I even put parchment paper at the bottom. You're also greasing the parchment paper. We're double greasing because we want to make sure everything, and if, whenever you use parchment paper, put a little bit of butter on the bottom so it'll stick. Otherwise, it's going to flip flop. And when you're baking, you don't want to like bake it and then it, the paper rises and then you get baked paper into your baked goods. Not as delicious as you think it would be. Um, so I'm going all the way around with my butter. And then what I like doing with cakes, such as these loaf cakes or like buns or anything that doesn't have lots of, you're not gonna be frosting it, is I like taking a little bit of sugar. And it's just like a little bit of cane sugar. Um, and I just drop some in the middle of my pan, such as this, just, just like a little sprinkling. And then I take that and I rotate my pan around. And then if you buttered it well enough, the butter, the sugar will stick to the side. This is before I put a parchment paper? Um, put the parchment paper down, Rainy. You should put the parchment paper. But put the, some butter, a little bit of butter on the bottom yes. of the parchment paper when you yes. put it down so it sticks. Yes. And then like so. Otherwise, some people, if you don't want to use sugar, you can use flour. But make sure your pan is greased really well. Oh, with the removable bottom, that sugar is going everywhere. Per usual, I'm wearing, I'm making a mess and I'm not wearing an apron. <laughs> I still <laughs> one today. I know. Woo. Everyone's disappointed. Okay. So, um, Mary gives a good point. If you want to soften your butter, uh, roll it between the parchment paper or plastic bag. Yes, that's a good, that's a good way to do it too. Or you can also boil water, um, get like a stainless steel bowl. Uh, go ahead and pour the boiling water on that and then put the butter on a flat surface and then take the empty bowl that you've removed the water from and stick it on top and the leftover steam from the hot water will help soften the butter because we want it pretty soft. And the reason why we want it soft, everybody, is because we're about to whip a lot of air into that butter. It needs to be soft because this is going to be the primary rise. Because if you didn't notice in this recipe, we have no baking powder and we have no baking soda. It's all coming from eggs and the butter. That's gonna make it go up. And the bit of club soda that we're about to put in. So I'm lying just a little bit. So, all right, we've greased our pan, hopefully. You have uh, buttered it, you've either sugared, floured it, and your oven is preheated to 350 degrees. Other things that you're gonna need right now is you're gonna need your butter and your sugar. So it should hopefully be soft. And if it's not, um, Mary just went ahead and gave you a couple of tips of what you can do is you can put it in a plastic bag or on parchment paper and roll it out and it'll soften a little bit more. Uh, I like sometimes taking my butter and sticking it right by the oven while it preheats and the residual heat from that will make it soft. Uh, or like I said, you can do the steam method where you go ahead and put the hot water in like a stainless steel bowl, empty it and then put the bowl on top of the butter and then let that happen. But mine's been sitting on the counter for a little bit so it's pretty soft. You don't want it to be melted, but you want it to be about room temperature, a little bit more than room temperature. And we're gonna go ahead and take one and a half sticks of butter, which still feels like a lot, but it's not a pound. So you can feel a little bit better about that. And we're gonna go ahead and um, you can do it two ways. Uh, if you've got a really powerful stand mixer, you don't necessarily have to cut up this butter. I like putting it into pieces though, just to help it along. Or you can use a hand mixer or you can use a whisk and elbow grease. And if that is the case, if you're using a whisk in your hand because you don't have a mixer, I would cut up this butter because the smaller pieces are going to need to be whisked faster and it'll fasten, it's definitely even a word fasten, it'll make it faster, it'll create it faster. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys a bit of the bowl look today. This is my stand mixer. I have a paddle attachment on my stand mixer. And I'm taking my butter, this is a half a stick right now, and I'm just putting into pieces into my stand mixer. And then here's the stick. So it's one and a half sticks, 
or three quarters cup. When I say three quarters cup, it doesn't feel as bad, right? Three quarters cup. And then what's great is if you haven't yet and you're still trying to grease your sheets or your pan or whichever you are baking in today, you can also take what's great about these pieces of paper is that look at all the butter that's still at the bottom of this. You can use this to grease your, um, your pan. So I like, sometimes I like saving these, but in the moment, I'm gonna put these aside. All right, to this butter, we are going to add what's gonna feel like a lot of freaking sugar. We're gonna use one and a quarter cups of sugar. So I actually already took this recipe, I adapted it from um, a really great bakery here in New York City called Magnolia, which became famous from uh, the series Sex in the City on HBO. They have these cupcakes um, from Magnolia Bakery that is what they're known for. But what people don't know is they have this really amazing lemon vanilla bun cake. And this is where this recipe is adapted from. Um, I think it's actually better than their cupcakes, uh, which is saying a lot. So. <laughs> We are going, though, to use one and a half or one and a quarter cups of sugar. And I actually cut back the sugar just a little bit because, as you know, I don't like things super, super sweet, and I don't think you need the extra sugar. So I took a little bit out. Um, so we're going with one and a quarter cups. I'm using uh, just regular cane sugar. And so uh, if you've got granulated the white sugar, that's fine, too. And I'm just going to dump that straight into the bowl with my butter. So here we go. Here's the butter. Drop that straight into the bowl. How are we doing, Rainy? How's your butter? Looking okay? I think it's okay. So the sugar, you said we should leave a little before putting the rest in? Uh, no. You can dump the whole thing. Dump the whole thing. Today, uh, Rini, so those of you who don't know, Rini and I made a Swiss roll cake uh, yesterday, which was a lot more complicated. So today will feel a little bit better for us. <laughs> we don't have to be so exact. What's really good about this is we're going to be able to dump in a whole bunch of stuff and mix it. So a little bit of sugar didn't make it into my bowl, so I'm just going to use my spatula. And then this is the part where you are going to beat this butter and sugar together until it is very light and very fluffy. We want to aerate the butter as much as possible because, again, we don't have any rising agents. There's no uh, baking powder. There's no baking soda. So this part is going to help the cake rise. Also are your eggs, which I hope are room temperature because if they are cold, it's going to counteract what we're trying to do here because you want the aeration of the eggs and they're gonna whip up higher and faster if they're room temp. And if, so if you don't have your eggs out right now, take them out of the refrigerator, put them aside, maybe put them a little bit closer to your oven so that they can get to room temp by the time we use them. For now, we are gonna beat this until they're pale and they're yellow and it looks fluffy. I kid you not, for at least three or four minutes. Okay, so be patient with it. I'm gonna go ahead and lock my stand mixer. I'm gonna go ahead and put this uh, to start low and then move it up to medium high. You don't want everything to splatter at you. Let me show you. I'm gonna increase speed. of sugar it's going to evaporate into the butter as much as possible and your butter is going to look like I said uh, it's going to be like a palish yellow and it's going to be pretty fluffy so here I go again and you're going to see me every so often going to lift and I'm going to push down my butter but you can start seeing it's starting to get really kind of fluffy and there's a good consistency here we're going to do this a little bit longer do not be afraid of doing this for a while it's not over mixing we're just incorporating the butter and the sugar really well start start low again Okay, 
to take one quick look at it again. Okay, that looks pretty good, actually. It looks pretty fluffy. It's kind of looking a yellowy. Okay, it almost looks like cookie, cookie dough. I'm gonna give it maybe one more minute, but it definitely looks aerated. There's definitely air in it. You can see the air pockets if you look really closely. So this is a this is a good thing. So maybe give it about another minute or so. In the stand with it. I've beaten the crap out of my butter. And I can see air pockets, which is a good thing. And it then, reminds me of mashed potatoes. Yes, yes, exactly. You wanted to get that fine. I can see the granules of sugar is incorporated in the butter. And my butter, and I'll give you a little bit of closer look. It's now this like, it's a little bit paler than it was before, and it is definitely fluffier than it was before, and that's good. We have fluffed the butter. All right. I'm gonna give it one last go. stare at it and I think I think it's good enough I'm gonna push my butter all the way down though because in the next bit we're gonna have to do it anyway so I'm gonna push my butter down and we should be good so we have fluffed the butter and we've added some air and the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna deal with our eggs so we're gonna add the eggs in one at a time uh, the best way to do this is, I have not cracked my eggs yet, so we will crack them together. Keep mixing like Rini is if you don't think your butter is fluffy enough, but um, it should be a pretty good consistency if you've been mixing for about three or four minutes. Uh, I'm about to take an egg right now. I like doing it in separate containers. We're doing whole eggs. You don't have to separate them out, but we're adding them one at a time into this mixture. And again, it's the aeration that we're looking for because we want to incorporate as much air as possible. That's going to help the rice. So I just- yeah, I have a practice. question. For the yeah. butter and sugar, how do we know it's done? Um, it should look fairly, I want to, I, I keep on calling it fluffy, but the gra the sugar granules should be really incorporated into your butter and it should look, the volume of it should have risen just a little bit. It almost looks like exactly what you were saying, like mashed potatoes or, um, such, but you can see it, you'll see like little air pockets too, if you look really, really close, but it should be fairly fluffy. Okay. Fluffy is such a generic term, but that's, the, <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. Kind of like exactly like that. No, I think, I think what I want to know, is there something as too much fluffing? No, never, okay. never. Okay. If you've over mixed it at this point, yeah. it's good. You're okay. fine because that's what we need anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and crack one egg. I'm going to crack my egg on the counter. I like doing it in a separate container because I can catch if there's eggshells that crack into my egg. So I just plopped it into a separate container. And I'm going to go ahead and add in this egg into my mixing bowl. And we are going to mix it on the bowl. And then add in the egg until it gets incorporated. You can increase the speed. Until it pretty much is inside and then I'm going to take my other egg and I'm going to crack it. We're going to do this three times because we've got three eggs. Double check to make sure there's no shells. Let this go on low. Drop an egg. You can get the egg sloshing around and then you can go ahead and if you have a stand mixer like me, you can push down the butter, the butter egg mixture as it rises up. Also in a regular bowl as well. All right. And then last egg, cracked on the counter. No eggshells, we're good to go. I'm gonna put this on low. 
I'm gonna add my egg. And we're gonna mix that until it's incorporated. And again, if you need to help out your batter, push down the cake batter. If it's rising, you can feel the butter at the bottom and just mix the egg and the butter and the sugar. And there's no over mixing at this point uh, to go ahead and get it correctly. And I think I lost Rini. Well, look, I've lost Rini, but I'm gonna mix. Hopefully she comes back in. I think there's Rini. I think I've got you back. Let's try it again. <laughs> well, that's happening. I'm going to quickly, my hands have got butter. Hey! Hey! We lost you, but now you're back. Yeah. All right. My yeah. So I've added my eggs into my sugar butter mixture, all three of them. It is incorporated. I will show you what my bowl looks like. You've got a nice yellowy batter. Right, make sure everything is mixed in, and like I mentioned before, there is no over mixing at this part, all the rise is coming from your eggs and your butter. So, the more air that we flip into it, or the more air that we whip into it, the better. So, if it doesn't look incorporated, the eggs doesn't look incorporated into your mixture, keep mixing it, and that's with your hand, with the stand mixer, or with the hand mixer. And while I'm talking to you, I'm gonna let it go for a little bit. The reason why there's what I call no overmixing at this point is because we haven't added any flour yet. So there's no uh, way that we're going to go ahead and create um, a cake that's tough because there's no gluten yet into the cake. We're just adding air, right? So again, if you're mixing it with a hand mixer or a stand mixer or with your hand, uh, just beat and beat and beat until it feels like you've added some air. And this, I'll show you again. It's kind of almost like doubled in volume a little bit, right? It's gotten a little bit higher in my stand mixer because I've added the air and I've added the eggs and the butter and everything you have mixed, just push down. So, we should do All right, next. We are gonna go ahead and add flour, which is um, one and I believe a half cups, one and a half cups of flour and a quarter teaspoon salt into our mix. You can either sift this in if you want a little bit of a finer crumb, which is perfectly okay. And you can just, or you can just add it directly into the bowl. Today, I'm just gonna add it directly in the bowl because I feel like it's rustic and it's fine. <laughs> we're not making a chiffon. If we're making a chiffon then sift it in because you want really fine granules. So I'm gonna show you my bowl. So all I have here, this is one and a half cups of flour. I'm just gonna pour it into my bowl all at once. We're not incorporating this in bits. Oh, actually, I lied to you. Don't add in the flour. Did you add in all the flour? If you've added in all the flour, I say no. Okay, great. We're going to add in the flour in thirds. My bad. I forgot. So, as everyone's like, Julianne, um, if you've added all your flour in, because you've decided to add as fast as you, so we are okay. Okay. I'm terrible, and I forgot to tell you to add the salt. Okay, so today's bad Julia. Uh, we're gonna add the flour and the club soda in thirds, sorry. Uh, you do wanna add to one, your one and a half cups of flour, a quarter teaspoon of salt. So I'm gonna take my quarter teaspoon of salt, I'm gonna just stick it in my flour bowl like that. Um, give it a little bit of a twirl, so that way it gets incorporated. Okay. And then we are gonna take, I've got club soda here, this is just regular, you know, off the shelf club soda. If you don't have club soda, seltzer or sparkling water, you can use, but you need to add a half teaspoon of baking soda. The difference between club soda and like seltzers is there's a little bit of bicarbonate that is going to help us help the rise. Uh, we want the bubbles in the club soda. And afterwards, ooh, you can hear it. Afterwards, you can make a nice 
drink with your club soda and have a little cocktail while, while you wait. But we want a third cup of uh, this plus two tablespoons. So I'm going to get my liquid measuring cup. Do you have a question? Yes. So for the club soda, I, I poured it ahead of time. Should I not have done that? Then I'll open another bottle. Uh, is it still fizzy? If it's I see bubbles. Yeah, if it's still fizzy, it should be fine. I wouldn't worry. If, as long as it's still fizzy. Uh, the mix, do you mix the flour and salt in the egg mixture? We will. We're going to incorporate the flour and the salt in the egg mixture uh, a third at a time. So we'll do a flour, then we'll do club soda, then we'll do flour, then we'll do club soda, then we'll do flour. So we don't do all the flour at the same time. And the reason why we're doing that is because we're aerating the mix and we want to not overmix the flour in. Um, but which is where in the beginning I was like, dump the flour in, don't dump the flour in. That was a mistake on my part. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna do a third pump. I'm gonna put it on the ground if you're using a liquid measuring cup so you can level it. And then I'm gonna pour. You're doing a third cup plus two tablespoons. So here's my tablespoon. I'm gonna add in two tablespoons of club soda. Next, we're going to have, now you've got, uh, uh, the club soda is one third cup plus two tablespoons, give or take. One third cup, two tablespoons of club soda. I'm gonna start with the flour and I've put some of my flour into my bowl already. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix that first. We're gonna let it go for just a little bit. Let me see if I can tilt so you can see. Just until you start seeing the flour disappear. And then stop it. Push down, especially if you're using a hand mixer or stand mixer, push down the flour that has come up. It's okay if you're seeing the white of the flour. We're doing this in three incorporations. So if it doesn't get mixed in the first time, it's gonna get mixed in as you go. You're gonna take your club soda and you're gonna do a third of it, eyeball it. And then you're gonna go ahead and mix that in. Until it's incorporated. And then we're gonna take more of our flour salt mixture. We're gonna do another half of that, half of this mixture into the bowl. And then we're gonna mix that in. If you're on a mixer like a low medium speed because you don't want your flour to go everywhere push it down if you need to do half of the rest of, of your club soda we're going to do two more times so uh, half of this is going to go in then you should have a, about half of the club soda left we're going to mix that in okay, look that up and then now we're gonna take the rest of our flour, the remaining bit of our flour, and salt, all of it. What a terrible angle I'm giving you. <laughs> the rest of our flour and our salt. And we're gonna mix that in. And I'm gonna take my spatula again. I'm pushing down the flour that didn't get mixed in. And then I'm taking the last of my club soda and I'm pouring that in. Uh, it's one third cup. One third cup plus two tablespoons of club soda. Sorry, I just caught that uh, note. One third cup, two tablespoons. Um, not one and one third, too much, way too much. <laughs> we only have one and a half cups of flour, so don't make it too watery, one third cup. So this is my last of my club soda. I'm gonna pour that in and I'm gonna go ahead and mix this until I see the flour disappear. Do not over mix. And then just push down anything that you see. And you should have a fairly loose batter. Okay, at this point, all right. So my batter is like this, it's fairly droopy. 
It's not thick, but it's neither thick nor is it watery. It's in the middle. I'm going to add in my lemon zest. This is the zest of one lemon that I'm just going to go ahead and push down into here. And then I'm going to add in one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract. So this is just regular vanilla extract. We're going to go one and one half teaspoon. So that's one. And I'm eyeballing that one. That's a half of vanilla. Okay, don't use your mixer for this part. I'm going to Everything that I see here, I'm going to take my spatula, and I'm actually, I'm using my small spatula, I'm going to take my large spatula out, and we're going to fold in that vanilla, and we're going to fold in that lemon zest, so I have a bigger spatula. Just go ahead and fold it in, and when I mean fold, so it's like a stir, but you're going from underneath and then over, all right? And then you can grab any trace flour that you see. If it's still stuck at the top, go and grab it. And then that's it. Don't touch it anymore. As soon as you've incorporated the vanilla and you've incorporated the lemon zest, don't overmix it. Just let it go. The OCD in you is going to want to keep mixing and mixing. Don't do it. Because you've added so much air into this mixture that if you keep mixing, you're going to incorporate too much gluten. So this is what my mixture looks like. It smells really good. <laughs> you can, could you show that once more? Yes. And it's thick, but it's still, it's a little bit liquidy, right? So it just drops such as that. Um, it's not super thick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab my pan that I've prepared. And I'm going to go ahead and pour in my batter. I have a feeling I have too much batter for my pan. Should I just make another loaf pan and put the rest in it? Yeah, you can go ahead and put it in two different pans if you want. And my que other question is, when I fill up in the pan, should I just go halfway and keep that portion in case it rises? Um, usually you fill up your pan about two-thirds of the way up. So if it looks like it's going to go past that, then while it rises, it's not going to rise a lot, a lot, because we didn't use a rising agent, but it's going to rise a little bit, then go ahead and um, use another pan, or you can make like little cupcakes with them if you want as a testing, as a tester. I like sometimes making tester cakes that I just eat right off out of the oven. Um, my pan is pretty deep. If you're using a different size pan, remember it's going to change the baking time, so we're just going to have to watch it. And I'm going to pour this all in. Grab some stuff that fell on the sides. And then just smooth it out as best as you can in the pan. So that way it has a smoothish top. And then we're going to do what I call the cake tap on the counter trick just to level everything off as soon as I get all the batter. Okay. We're going to go ahead and lift up this pan. Look at all the batter on my fingers. We're going to lift up this pan for about an inch or two. And then just drop the pan like this one, two, three times. That levels out the cake. All right, so it's equalish. I'm gonna take this, it's gonna go in the oven. We're going in the oven for, and I lost um, Sadashna again. There, we're gonna grab her. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and put this in the oven. Uh, 35 minutes, I'm gonna check it right now. So I'm gonna put it in. I'm gonna quickly wash my hands. We have achieved, hopefully, pound cakes in the oven. <laughs> I, have, I have one more question. I yes. have a little bit left, which isn't big enough for like a loaf pan or anything. But can I just put it in a Pyrex bowl? Um, how, let me look at your pan. 
Let me look at your pan, Rini. Just to see if, if it's full, like super, super full. What, this one? Yeah, your cake pan. Can you see? Yeah. Oh, I see. How much more batter do you have left? Like maybe two spoons. Oh, just add that. I would say put it in the cake pan. But it's going to go like really high. Will it go really high? Yeah. Hmm. It's, at, it's at about... Do you have a cupcake liner or cupcake pan? No? No. Um, um, I wouldn't be so afraid of the rise in this cake. Okay. So I would put it in. Okay. But when you put it in the oven, and this yeah. is my caveat, yes. take a sheet pan, put it yes. underneath, just in case there's overflow. But because of the uh, fact we didn't add any baking powder in, I don't think it's going to rise that high. It'll get pretty high, but it shouldn't completely like go crazy. And then tap it on the counter before you put it in. Do you like put the lemon zest in the mixture? Yes. After you've added the flour and um, the club soda and incorporated that every other time, uh, and it's mixed together, fold in the lemon zest and the vanilla. Uh, stop mixing it and just use your hand and fold in the lemon zest and the vanilla at the very end. And then that's what you're going to put in the oven. And it's going for at least 35 minutes. If you're using a smallish pan, if you're using a larger pan, um, I would watch it. If it's thinner, error on less time. It's a bit thicker pan, like something with a lot of depth, and it's like, you know, a loaf pan, longer. So I'm putting mine in, I'm timing it about 35 minutes. I'll check it actually in 30. And the streak, I think, will be broken once again. I think we're going to go over an hour, just a little bit over an hour. Um, so thank you for sticking with us. But while you are here with me, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make um, a topping for this cake. Let me get rid of all the stuff that's sitting on my counter, as you know. Not enough counter space in the Brooklyn kitchen. I'm going to go ahead and move this aside. And um, what we're going to do... I just got my... Dropping everything. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to make a glaze while we wait for the cake to bake. And then just get rid of everything else that's on my counter. So if you zested your lemon, you probably have lemon juice or you have a lemon left over that you can take the juice from. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to take that lemon juice. We're going to go ahead and take the uh, some powdered sugar and we're gonna take some vanilla and we're gonna make a glaze out of it that we're gonna pour on once the cake is cooled. And I think Catherine just came on. Catherine, hello. Um, Catherine, you didn't mix, miss too much. We've just put the cake in the oven and now we're making a glaze. Um, but I think by the time you get your cake in the oven, you'll be, well, you'll see the part where we're putting the glaze on. So we don't wanna glaze the cake again when it's hot, but we'll go ahead and pre-make the glaze now. Uh, for when uh, it is ready. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use another small bowl. And if you have like a liquid measuring cup still, and actually that might be a good idea. Now, I was like, oh, I'll just use a liquid measuring cup I use the club soda in so I don't have to wash my dishes. But then I realized I dumped that liquid measuring cup into my bowl of mix and the bottom is completely drenched in mixture and it, I have to wash it and I don't want to right now. So we're not going to do it. Other bowl it is. No, new bowl. So we're going to take a bowl, uh, take your lemon juice that you have from your leftover lemon, right? You zested your lemon. You had a whole lemon left. Take that lemon juice. Um, we're going to take uh, about, mm, let's start with a quarter cup of sugar. Let me grab a muzzle cup. Start with a quarter cup. I like starting with less sugar because you can always add sugar if it feels too not as sweet enough for you. But you can't take away the sugar. So start with less. So we're gonna go ahead and put, I'm gonna take a quarter cup of sugar and I'll be kind of like generous about it. I'm like a heaping quarter cup of powdered sugar. And I'm gonna go ahead and stick that, I'll show you, into this bowl right here where that doesn't fall. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my vanilla extract again, and I'm gonna put about a teaspoon or two, up to you how much you want. I'm gonna go air on more, about two teaspoons. 
But again, you can eyeball it if you want to. You can always see we can always adjust the flavors. So it we can taste it while we go along. That's the difference between the glaze and the batter that we just made, right? Um, we can adjust this a little bit. And then you're going to take the lemon juice. I have the juice of one lemon here, and I'm just going to pour it again directly into my bowl. Here's my bowl. I've put my powdered sugar. I've put my vanilla. And I can tell already I'm going to have to add more powdered sugar. But we're going to start with a quarter cup. I'm going to grab a handy dandy whisk, or you can take a spoon if you don't have a whisk. That's fine. And we're just going to go ahead and mix. Mine looks really wet, so I'm going to go ahead and add some powdered sugar. I'm going to add another quarter cup of powdered sugar. In it goes. Still looks a little loose. Add some more. I'm gonna, again, it's, I'm going to go with quarter cup increments. Actually, I'm going to go half of that and then mix it and see what happens. Oh, that's starting to be better. Okay, that's the rest of it. Okay, and now the level of this glaze is basically up to your standards. If you want it to be a little thicker, you add more powdered sugar. If you want it to be thinner, then you add less lemon juice. I started with a lot of lemon juice to begin with, so I might actually add, I'm going to go another eighth of a cup about, there we go. To me, this is actually pretty good consistency. And you just want to whisk it until there's no, the powder sugar gets incorporated. I have like little lumps. It's pretty, it's pretty loose still. So I'm going to add in another eighth of a cup and I think this is going to be the winner okay yeah so mine is watery but it's also not super thick if you want yours again to be thicker than this you can add more powdered sugar you can also do a quick taste test oh that's very tart Ooh, that's a little tart <laughs> If you want, add more vanilla. There's like all sorts of things you can do to this. If you think it's super tart and you want a little bit of saltiness, go ahead and add in a little bit of salt, which I'm going to do. Mm. If I can find my salt. Oh, salt. All right. I'm going to just do a dash of salt. That wasn't even like a, a certain teaspoon. It was just sort of like I'm going to add it in to taste it, and then I'm going to taste it. Ooh. Ooh, that was nice. <clears throat> I might add in like another tablespoon or two of powdered sugar. I'm just gonna make it a little bit thicker. But again, this is totally up to you the way that your glaze is. If you want it to be thinner, you want it to be thicker. If you want to use less lemon juice, use less lemon juice. Since I used the whole lemon in the cake, I decided just to use all of my lemon juice because I wasn't gonna use it for anything else. And your glaze should be pretty wet. So. It looks wet now. The great thing about glazes is that when you glaze it over the cake, as it dries to room temp on the cake, it'll stiffen up and it won't be so wet. Um, another thing that you can do if the glaze is really thin and you like that kind of thinness of the cake and you're worried that it's not going to go ahead and um, glaze over and get thicker, you can poke holes in your cake and go ahead and pour the glaze on it so that the glaze goes through the cake and then it's extra lemony. So that's another thing that you can do just to be extra. Um, I think mine's pretty good. So again, it's like a little bit watery, but it's not completely super, super thin that's dripping completely off. It's taking a little bit to drip off. But I think that's okay. I think I'm okay. So I'm gonna put that aside. And then again, if I come to see it later on and I decide that it's too thin, then I'll just add more powdered sugar. But taste it, definitely taste it first. Um, all right. So my timer says I've got at least another 20 minutes. If you were with uh, Rini and I last night, we were making vanilla Swiss roll cakes. And uh, I did not spill my Swiss roll cake during that time because you have to let it rest for about 30 minutes at least to get it to room temp, um, if not longer. Sometimes you can put it in the fridge and do it faster. So I'm going to actually show you how to go ahead and spill a Swiss roll cake.
because I'm going to take that cake you made last night. Sadly, I'm not going to show you how to make it. <laughs> you had to be there last night, but I'm going to show you how to do the Swiss roll really quick. And I'm going to put two things into the Swiss roll cake. I'm going to use cream and jam. So I've got, and I'm going to show you right now, I've got this vanilla Swiss roll cake that I rolled up out of the oven. And I went ahead and I rolled it up in parchment paper. And I'm going to take the side. I should face it this way really quick. I'm going to face the side, the seam side, towards me. And I'm going to unroll this cake. OK? So now you see the wrinkles are where I, the cake was folded. And that's what you want to see in a situation like this, because that means that it's going to conform back to that shape. I'm going to take powdered sugar. And I'm going to sprinkle that on top of this cake because it's going to help it refold properly. And you can smooth that down um, either with a spatula if you want, or I have a flat. Let me grab. So yesterday, Julian, when yes. I filled up, I think I overfilled a little bit. So when I sliced it, some of the layers have jam coming out. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, I could take it out with a, a spoon, but just if that helps anybody else. Oh, so, it's good to know. I know um, yeah. We were talking yesterday about how you might overfill because you get really overzealous, might overfill. Yes. 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 So you might so, want to hold back yeah. just a little. So I made some whipped cream earlier, and I just took some heavy whipping cream. This is two tablespoons of powdered sugar and a teaspoon about a vanilla, and I whipped this up earlier. All you do is take a hand mixer. You can do it by hand. Um, make sure everything is cold, your bowl, the heavy whipping cream, and the whisk, if you can do. And then just go ahead, and I'm going to take some of this whipped cream, and I'm going to pour them onto this. And like Rini said earlier, you want to be a little bit – conservative in the beginning just in case and I'm gonna go ahead and just I'm gonna leave half an inch on the outsides of the square like so and I'm gonna add some more whipped cream And I can already tell that when this rolls up, that cream is going to fatten up right there because look at all the cream that's there. So I'm going to flatten it as much as possible. Put some on the side. Unroll this a little bit. Try to get underneath the crease. And again, I'm trying to leave room on the sides. I'm being very messy about it, so whether or not that is true. Okay. A little bit more. I feel like it needs some at the end. And again, you can be conservative about it because when we roll this up, it's going to be messy. So. Okay. Next because I'm being even more crazy about it. I'm gonna go ahead and add some je uh, jelly. I've got some strawberry jelly that I'm gonna add here. I can get a teaspoon. I just got some regular, you know, in a jar jelly. This is a Smucker strawberry jelly. Jam. What cream is it? Heavy whipping cream. Heavy whipping cream. That's, uh, that's the cream you wanna use. Because if you use cream that's not what they say heavy, it will not whip up correctly. So it has to be, it has to have a lot of milk fat, basically. <laughs> so now I'm grabbing some jam and I'm just gonna go ahead and dollop. This is jelly actually, I should dollop some of that. And I'm just gonna spread that into the cream as best as I can. If you're using jam, it probably would be more forgiving to you than jelly is. 
And if it doesn't stay quite on top and it goes on the bottom, that's fine. I'm going to do another spoonful here. Try to get some to the edges. Make sure it gets in the middle. Make sure it gets to the end. Okay. Now, this is the test. We're going to roll this back up. And let's see if this will actually roll back up. Starting from the short side, I'm going to pull this. And actually, I still have some more whipped cream, so I'll push down on it. Okay. I'm going to take the short side. I'm going to pull it towards me while I roll it. Use the parchment paper to help me. I'm going to try to keep it, the roll tight. Use the parchment paper as you go along. And then we're going to end on the seam side down like so and then I am not going to do anything else to this cake so you can see it from here I'm going to take this whole thing and I'm actually going to refrigerate it and let it set for at least 30 minutes to an hour because I just put a whole bunch of whipped cream in it I just put some jam in it and it needs to chill back again because remember I was smoothing it out and I was doing all sorts of things to it. So I'm gonna actually take some powdered sugar and put some powdered sugar on the top so it helps it not stick to the paper that I'm about to wrap it back in. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use the same parchment paper. I'm gonna wrap it up. If you have a serving plate already, you can put it directly on the serving plate and chill it. And then when it comes out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim off the ends. I'm just going to cut off the two ends and about an inch on each side. And you're going to have a regular uh, Swiss roll. So I'm just going to take this and I'm sticking it in the fridge. So you've just now seen the second cake of the day because we're overachievers, Rini and I. Yeah. <laughs> so. I'm going to turn the light on in my oven just to stare at my cake. Uh, if you have not seen it, just to see what's happening. Ooh, there's smoke. I feel like some of my cake batter might have been loose at the bottom. Um, but there's a little bit of smoke coming through my cake, but it's still baking. So that's good. <laughs> um, but hopefully... Everyone has their cake in the oven at this point, and we're just waiting. And with the glaze, what do we do with the thing we made? What do we do with it? Yeah, we just set, it. you just whisk it. it. You whisk okay. it all together, and then yeah. you can just set it aside. Okay. Until you need it. Okay. So, and actually, as my glaze has been sitting here a little bit, it's gotten thicker. I can see it already. Here, I'll show you the consistency. So it was a little bit loose, but now it's actually a little thin. It's a little, it's th thicker as it is, as it sits. So I'm going to put that, and I'm going to set that aside. And I'm going to try to put everything else away. And my timer says I've got at least another 10 or 15 minutes. So I think I used to, I put the whole lime, lemon in the um, place. Maybe I, that was too much. You think salt, I've already added all the sugar I want to. So salt is what would help balance it? Um, if it's too sweet, add some salt. No, it's too tart. It's too tart? Yes. Um, I would, yeah, I would add a little bit of salt. Just a little bit of salt. And then maybe vanilla would help it out too. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. a little bit of vanilla. But you know what too, Rini? When you pour it over the cake, you're not going to have a lot of it. So yeah. if it feels like a little bit too much, now yeah. it won't necessarily be. It will probably be okay. Yeah. yeah. Or when you pour it over the cake, you don't have to pour the whole thing. Yeah, sure. that's a good idea. Or as a third option, you can poke holes in the cake and then pour the glaze yes. into it, kind of the like a like slices. Yeah, and then it'll suck in the, uh, the lemon glaze. So I have a 
feeling Instagram is going to cut us off in like six minutes and our cakes are still baking in the oven. So but we can try the cake, right? Yes. So I'm going to have to start the feed again. For those of us that are with me, I'm giving you advance warning right now, then probably in about five minutes, it's going to cut us off. And then if you want to see the conclusion of the bake that Rene and I are doing, uh, my cake should hopefully come out of the oven in the next 15 minutes. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and grab it out of the oven. We're going to let that cool down to room temp. And then you're going to go ahead and just pour the glaze over on top once it's cool. And the reason why you don't want to pour the glaze over when it's warm is because it's just going to melt right off the cake. Um, that's why. It needs to be at least room temp or cooler than that to put the glaze on. So you're going to have to wait just a little bit. If you don't want to wait and you want to eat the cake straight away, first of all, it will be you want to let it sit for just a little bit because if you cut warm cake, it'll be crumbly and you don't want it. To, it'll lose the shape that you've made it in. You've like created this like shape. It'll lose the shape. So um, wait a little bit and then cut into it. But if you don't want to wait for the glaze, what you could do is you could cut the cake, give yourself a slice, take the glaze and drizzle some on top and call it a day. <laughs> don't waste the club soda. Drink it up. Don't waste the club soda. I know, I was like, then now you can make cocktails with your club soda. If you've got some vodka, mix a little bit of club soda. Maybe you've got some like fun syrups hanging out and you can go ahead and put some like syrups and vodka and club soda or, you know, other things, mixes with club soda. Um, do you, can you do tequila with club soda? I don't think I've ever done that. That might taste weird. Eh, stick with vodka or gin. <laughs> Probably vodka or gin. And then... Clear away uh, your counter space and start doing your dishes because we're almost done. So any other questions as we get through the breaks? So uh, I showed you, just as a recap, we just did a lemon vanilla pound cake. Uh, we made it less than a pound per se because we went ahead and we have the recipe. And then I've also got um, a vanilla Swiss roll cake that I just showed you that I made yesterday. And I showed you how to fill and roll it. Um, that was from a carryover from what we did the other night uh, with Rini on her show, uh, Teen Real Tea with Rini the Realtor. And uh, that was what we made there. And so now you've witnessed two cakes today. Well, once we get this other cake out of the oven, hopefully. Um, Hopefully everyone's cake is okay. If you were worried about the batter being too much for your pan, just like I told Rini earlier, just stick a cheap pan underneath your pan, and then that's what you stick in the oven, and it'll catch any of the overflow that's happening in your oven, okay? If it's if you are afraid that it'll go way over the cake pan. Um, I should have actually thought about that because I used um, a cake pan with a removable bottom, and sometimes those things drip, and I get a little bit worried if you're, especially if your batter's a little bit loose. Um, hopefully that is not the case, but we'll see in a few minutes when I check my cake, what has happened. Um, aside from that, uh, everything should be sorted. And again, this is a recipe that was adapted uh, from Magnolia Bakery, and it utilizes club soda as the rising agent or helps the rising agent, agent along with the whipping of your eggs and the butter. So you use no baking powder, you use no baking powder. Which I feel like was very... Uh, you know, uh, baking soda and baking powder, and this is a great moment for uh, Mary or even Sherry, hello Sherry, uh, to comment in when uh, baking soda and baking powder were actually invented because for a long time, uh, bakers didn't have baking soda or baking powder. So to get the rise for cakes and things like that, they really had to depend on methods like egg whites being folded into the, the cake to get the rise, um, which is a lot of what French cakes are is a lot of that method of adding in um, egg whites and meringue versus adding what I believe is an American invention of the baking powder and the baking soda to help the cake rise. And you had a lot of denser cakes back then too, like fruit cakes, um, pound cakes like we're making right now that don't require so much of a rise versus like a chiffon, right? Or um, well, actually the chiffon cake is the, the egg white. So that one is like a French method. Um, so I don't know if, out there in the land of uh, IDs uh, that uh, Mary and uh, Sherry are on, and they can Google it and let us know baking powder, baking soda stats. But from my knowledge, uh, that's a very recent invention. I want to say 19th century. I don't even think they had it in the 1800s. I could be wrong. So 
there you go about that. But hi again. <laughs> so you are back with me in my Brooklyn kitchen. This is part two of the vanilla or lemon vanilla pound cake that I'm making with my friend Rini. Our cakes are currently in the oven and I was using a cake with a removal bottom. Hello, Caitlin. Uh, there goes Rini. Let me see if I can add her. I was using a cake with a removable, a cake tray with a removable bottom, and I was, I opened my cake, or uh, opened my oven just now to start my cake, and I realized that had, there was cake dripping from the bottom of my cake and cooling at the bottom of my oven, and I was like, crap! So, good thing I noticed. As we wait for the cake to go, I've got at least another 10-ish um, minutes, um, because I was able to go ahead and pull that cake out of the oven. Thankfully, the cake didn't have so much dripping out of the bottom that it's still going to be a proper cake. But oh my gosh, it like dripped like a funnel cake size bit of the cake batter. So this is actually a very good uh, reminder, which I told Rini to do, but I did not do. I went to check mine right after you said that. <laughs> to put a sheet pan underneath the cake's pans with removable bottoms because sometimes they leak like mine did, if the bottom isn't securely um, set into the cake pan. Um, and you will not know that because your cake batter is usually pretty thick until it starts to bake and the butter starts to melt and everything in the cake starts to melt as it, you know, combines and it like everything helps to rise it. And then you'll start seeing cake batter come out of your cake. So it won't be an overflow from the top where like the cake batter rises and then it comes out from the top. It'll come from the bottom. Um, which is why you know, sometimes you take a sheet pan and not even underneath, uh, underneath your pan, you can put it under the rack underneath your pan just to catch it. So that way you won't have a moment where you're like, is something burning? And then look over and realize that it is random cake batter that has fallen into your oven. So amateur movies okay. today. I'm amazed at how calm you are about it. Well, you know, and this is the thing I feel like um, baking is such an experiment every time you do it that uh, I, for one, am not freaked out about it because I knew that there was a lot of cake batter to begin with in the cake, as you know, Rini, because you were putting it, I also use a six inch. So in my head, I was just like, well, I have cake batter to spare, so it's not too bad. And I stared at the cake itself and it's still rising and it's still doing all those things. So I didn't lose too much cake batter, so I'm not freaked out about it. Um, and I was able to get it off the bottom of my oven before it burnt which is the part that would very good yeah because then you're when, later on you're gonna have to scrape your oven you have to clean your oven that's the worst cleaning your oven is like one of my top three things i hate doing and i bake a lot so i should clean my oven actually a lot more than i do but i have a self-cleaning oven which is helpful so but the idea of like you've got like burnt pieces but I, I noticed it as soon as we got off of live and I was looking at the time, I was like, huh, I should maybe pseudo check on my cake. And that's when I looked and I was like, it seems sort of smoky. What's happening? And realized that I had started dribbling down. So it happens to, to it happens to all of us guys, like disasters in baking happen all the time. And okay. the thing is, is that you don't know things are about to happen until they do. And you can only con control so much. But if worst case to worst, you just make another cake. Yes. <laughs> it's about 30 minutes. Is that enough time? Should we take a look? Yeah, you can go ahead and check right now. What I would do is um, open the oven, take a toothpick, stick it in the center of your toothpick, and just double check to see if it is coming out clean. And if it is, then that means the cake is cooked. And then you just let it cool, and you let it go. So I had some drip also from the bottom, but because I have the pan, the... You were wise! <laughs> You were no. definitely wise. I think you're always good at giving other people advice. So you gave I me. I know. So I kind of like it. And hey, Mary, you're back. You missed my tirade, Mary, about the fact that I had a cake pan with a removable bottom. And because I forgot that the removable bottom cake pans sometimes get a little loose at the bottom, you're supposed to put a sheet pan underneath to catch any dribbles. And I completely forgot. And mine dribbled down into my oven. Um, and I was just telling Rini that in the break, in between me getting back on live, I was like, oh crap, there's batter in my oven. And I was trying to get rid of it. And uh, I calmly scraped it out and put my cake back in the oven. And hopefully everything is sorted. But it actually is still a pretty good rise for the fact that I lost cake batter. 
and again with a cake such as this it's not rising it's not going to overflow because we didn't put so much rising agent in it right we, we basically didn't put any rising agent at all we're just waiting using the a little bit of the club soda the air from the club soda and uh the eggs and the butter to help this cake rise so so i checked mine it's still like that remember last time i told you it had this jiggly thing in the middle so i i i think it needs 10 more minutes yeah then i would say give it give some time yeah. um don't pull your cake out of the oven too early for sure um yeah. let it let it go ahead and sit in there for a while because because it is a pound cake bunch style cake and again i say bunch because if you double the recipe it's enough for a bunch cake so you can put it in a bunch pan um or just like in a standard loaf pan right if it's because it's one of those cakes they're going to be denser and they're also going to take a little bit longer to bake right versus if you're making a regular you know like american style cake in those like round cake pans that take like 20 or 30 minutes no because we're using a pan that's denser you're going to have a longer rise if you use this, a smaller pan, so maybe you decided you wanted to use two eight-inch pans, I guess, and you separated out your batter, or even two six-inch pans and separated out your batter, you have to check it earlier because you don't have as much batter as Rini and I do in our pans right now. So different pans will be different baking times, and if you, what you can do is based on the recipe that you see, and this is where you can debate, right? Because especially now in this pandemic in this quarantine, you don't necessarily want to buy things that you don't need. What's the point of buying things you're only going to use once, for example? So if you see a cake recipe that you really like, you can definitely just go ahead and make the cake. And if you don't have the size pan for it, then you accommodate the pan that you've got, right? So um, <laughs> John's on. So for those of you who, who missed that fabulous episode that John and I were making brownies together, and I kept on suggesting to do all these random things. And he was just like, I think we should stick to the recipe, never deviate. It might, yes, never deviate. Yeah, you can, if, if you were inexperienced, it might end badly for you. So <laughs> that was a good time though. So yeah, John. Um, the idea though of like, um, like I said, working with what you've got, right? So if you've got, um, like, I don't know, if you only had a cupcake liner today, a cupcake muffin tin, you could have made like 12 little cakes instead of making one big cake, right? You just have to look at the pan and decide if you're gonna have too much butter, you're gonna have less batter. Uh, if you see a cake recipe, like a bunch cake recipe, and you don't have a bunch pan, you know, half the recipe and then make it in regular cake pans. Make it in a square pan. You know, like these are all the things that you can kind of do to, to accommodate that and still make the things that you see that you wanna make, right? So that's just all depends upon that. So I am cooking my cake in like three minutes and I'm hoping that I didn't lose a lot of volume. John completely missed it. I was just talking about how I had uh, a little disaster and forgot to put a sheet pan underneath my cake and it dribbled down to the, to the bottom of my oven. So my cake is probably gonna be less than the best, but that's okay <laughs> because uh, we are here and we are checking our cakes. And you said, Rini, that you have like at least another 10 minutes or so? I think so. Because I put in mine after yours. So yeah. I'll let you go first. Okay. So my timer, I'm still using my timer that my friend Catherine gave me when I first moved to New York. Um, says it's like at least another minute or two. And so there we go. We'll find out in a second. Um, but hopefully everybody that was baking with us, I'm hoping that their cakes are in better position than definitely mine but I hope everyone's cakes are in a good place and I didn't say it before we got cut off the last time but I hope uh, if you're making cake now or later if you make it please take a picture of it uh, let Rini and I know how it went even if you found that it was a disaster even because that is all a learning experience for us all so my timer went off so I'm about to go ahead and check on my cake uh, I'm kind of scared to check on my cake but we're gonna check on my cake I don't smell burning this time, so I feel like, uh, because I put a cake pan underneath it now, I will check. Mine looks like it might need a little bit of time. I've got a toothpick that I'm gonna stick into the... I'm still getting a couple of crumbs, but it's actually doing pretty well. Um, I'm gonna grab a, a 
better toothpick. I'm going to go ahead and show you. Oh, actually, huh. I could be lying to you. This could almost be done. A little. Okay, I've got, so you can't see it there, but there's like a couple of crumbs. It's a little bit sticky, so I'm not too worried. Uh, I'm checking it, and I'm now checking it in three different places because, okay, there we go. See, now you see a lot more, and that's the end. So the outside of my cake still needs probably about five minutes or so. Um, despite the disaster of earlier, I still got like half of my cake in there. It looks all right. So when I take it out, it's actually going to maybe hopefully look halfway decent. But <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and I put a sheet pan underneath now, and I'm putting it back in the oven. Still at 350, and I'm gonna give it like five minutes, but it's pretty close. It's actually very close. So hopefully it'll be okay. <laughs> and if not, Rini, I've got the Swiss roll cake to tide me over. <laughs> yeah, because we made two cakes. We were I remember we're gonna put the glaze over whatever we make. That's true. And actually, let's stare at the glaze. So my glaze is still pretty loose. I was contemplating actually poking holes in my cake and pouring the glaze in it. And I think I'm going to, and I'll actually show you what that looks like, um, just to make it a little bit more lemony uh, and uh, have that kind of like tartness with every bite. I'm not going to do any of the frosting. There's going to be no frosting on this cake. You're going to cut it and you're just going to eat it like it is. And you don't have to worry about um, dealing with frosting. So hopefully, if the cakes cooperate, I've set my timer again for another five minutes. My apartment doesn't smell like it's on fire anymore. <laughs> and we're doing good. <laughs> so hopefully we'll be sorted. Um, but I still got Mary on, I think. Mary, did you ever figure out if um, you had that baking powder, baking soda situation, like when it was invented? A little extra. I am. Yeah, that is a little extra, Mary. <laughs> of course it is. So Mary just commented because of the fact that I'm going to poke holes in my cake and stick the glaze in that it's a little extra. And she's right. because You don't have to do that at all. You can just, like I said, when it cools down, if your glaze is a little loose because you put too much lemon juice, then just add some powdered sugar and it'll thicken up and you can let it go but I'm not going to, I'm going to take my glaze. It's a little bit loose and I'm going to poke holes in my cake and add it in. And that is being a little bit extra. It's just a little extra something, something, right? So, but Mary, did you find out about the baking powder stuff? That was a Sherry fact, I think. Oh, did Sherry find out and let us know about baking powder and baking soda? I might've missed it. Every now and then I'm, I'm looking at the comments, but I'm, I'm not seeing everything. So um, hopefully I was right. Because I was out of thin air going, hey, I think that was a modern day invention, like in the 19th century. So can you imagine, though, we were just talking last night about stand mixers and uh, mixers. And is this something that you need to actually have when you bake things? And the answer is nine times out of 10, no. You don't need a stand mixer. You don't need a hand mixer. If you've got an arm and you've got like a spoon, you don't even need like a fancy like whisk or like a, a wooden spoon. If you just got, you know, that in your house, you can make stuff, you can make cake. But yesterday I was very thankful that I bought my hand mixer before making the meringue. Oh yeah. That would have been too much work. Yeah, yeah. Well, when you're making meringue, um, yeah. that definitely, I actually have watched someone make whipped cream and they actually teach you how to do that if whenever you go to, like if you go to a culinary school or such, they teach you how to make whipped cream by hand because you should know how to make it by hand. And I saw someone make it by hand and it took a long time. And I kept on saying to the, this person and I are friends. So I said to this person, do you want to use a mixer perhaps? And they were like, no, I want to use my arm because this is how like you should be doing it. And I'm like, all right, you go. It took them a really long time guys to make whipped cream. But if you have the time, and yeah. you're in a pandemic and we're in quarantine and you've got lots of time. You shouldn't be going out doing crazy things anyway. So 
what was the fact right? Baking powder was invented at 1843. Yes. Thank you, Mary. Uh, Mary just found out for us baking powder was invented in 1843. I was just talking about how a lot of modern day cake with baking soda and baking powder, that's just uh, something that we added recently in the probably, and I was about, about right, in the last um, century or so. Um, actually, it's more than a century because it's the 1800s. But uh, you didn't have it before, so you need to have other rising agents. And this particular cake, a pound cake, is an older type of recipe because it contains no baking powder and no baking soda because back in the day they didn't have that and so uh you're having it now because of uh, modern inventions but before you couldn't rely on that to get your cake to rise so you had to use things like the french method which i we were just talking about the meringue method where you whip up your egg whites and you fold in your egg whites and that's what makes the cake rise or you have to do things like this where you whip up your egg yolks really well so that way they cause the rise. And it's going to be thicker and denser as a cake, like a pound cake will be, because there is no rising agent, because it's an older type of cake. Um, we should dive into like the history of random cakes and try to make a weird old timey cake. <laughs> Where like they only make, you only have a spoon and a bowl and you have to figure out how to make a cake. Um, I would, it would, I would probably cry like to myself because I'm so used to like having a mixer or like, you know, and it's so easy. It takes like five or 10 minutes or whatever. And then, you know, here you are mixing it by hand and it takes a while. So more power to everyone though, that does it by hand. And you're probably getting a lot of um, uh, strength training because of your arms being moved around. So um, I'm going to check on my cake again. How are we doing with yours, Rini? Um, I think it's nearly done. I think mine is nearly done. I'm going to take my toothpick again. I'm going to stick, I'm going to get a clean toothpick. That one is, or a skewer, it's a skewer. I have skewers. And I'm going to stick that, I like checking in three places. So I'm going to stick, this is one, that's clean. Two, clean. This might be done. Clean. And I'll stick one more place just in case my cake's done. I'm done. So I promised you that I'm going to show you, because I'm being extra, the poking holes method. So while we're waiting for Reenie's cake uh, to go ahead and do, yes, you're right, flatbreads, Mary. Thank you. Uh, that is something. Or like, you know, yeast-based cakes, I bet you are older too, because they use like cake, they actually had yeast back then, and that is what helped cakes rise. And isn't it weird to think about putting yeast right now in cakes, but donuts. There you go. <laughs> so, all right. I'm going to show you really quick. When I talk to you about uh, using the glaze and I'm going to poke holes in my cake, I'm going to use a skewer and I'm going to show you the cake. I'm going to poke holes into my cake like so at random in any place. It doesn't really matter. It's still hot. I'm poking a lot of holes in my cake. And this is where I was talking about I lost some of my cake batter. So it was actually probably up to here. It would probably have been up maybe another half an inch to an inch that I lost some batter. But that's okay because I'm about to, to make it extra. But look at actually the rise. It's still hot despite the fact that I did lose batter. And I'm just poking as many holes as you want. Here. Do you want to take a look at mine? Yeah. Here. Oh, that looks it's beautiful. Not. Okay, thank you. That so, looks gorgeous. Should I take it out of the pan or just let no, it? No, leave it in the pan to cool. And you're going to let it cool down to room temperature and then take it out once it's cool. Okay. Because it might break if you take it out of the pan now because it's okay. still too warm. So Rini's cake looks fantastic. She didn't lose any batter. I did. My cake is about, I said about bad, halfway up the pan. I'm going to take my glaze. You can see that it's a little bit loose. And I poked a whole bunch of holes in my cake and I'm gonna pour the glaze directly onto the cake like so. And hope that I poked enough holes that it will go into the cake. And I'm gonna save some of my glaze actually. I'm only gonna do this for like half the glaze. So if we save, if we don't use up the entire glaze, can we use it later? And for how long can we keep it? Um, yeah, there's lemon juice in it. So if you wanna put it in the fridge, it'll probably last at least a week. 
going to be okay. So I went ahead and I poked holes in the cake and most of the, I'm going to poke holes in the outside where I'm seeing the pooling happening. Um, most of the glaze went inside the cake, which I'm very pumped about. And I'm going to save the other half. So as you see, my glaze was so warm, it basically melted into the cake. Okay. So I'm going to save this other half of glaze that I've got. And when the cake cools, I'm going to take it out of the pan and then I'm going to pour this glaze and I'm just going to go ahead and scatter it across the top. And there, my friends, you have, at some point or another, are going to have a vanilla, uh, a lemon vanilla pound cake. So this is the moment where me and I will show you our cakes so you can compare. And again, everyone's cakes will be 100 times better than Julianne's. Can somebody take a picture of the screen when we have our cakes up? Oh, I know. Where's my other? I have no idea where my other oven mitt went. So, oh, it's underneath my sheet pan. Huh. Okay. Ready? Here we go. Okay. <laughs> Our artificial, like, hello, we made cakes. And I could totally feel, so like my cake bottom was so loose that before I put the sheet pan on, there's actually still some batter on my sheet pan. So words of the wise, anybody that if you do have a uh, removable cake bottom to always put a sheet pan underneath. And from now on, I'm definitely going to remember. So, and because mine leaked also. So, so yes, very good example that Rini just said. Um, and it's so funny that I gave you the advice but forgot to take it myself. So <laughs> that said, <laughs> enjoy your Saturdays, everyone. Thank you for taking the time out um, to hang out with Rini and I and to make this pound cake with us. Again, if you made it, please let us know how it turned out. Tag us on Instagram, on Facebook, or wherever that like uh, you're posting these days, or just you know text it to us if you if you have our numbers, and just go ahead and let us know how uh, it went. And Thank right, you so Mary, this was awesome. Thank you. Thank you for coming and like joining me and for doing this two days in a row with me, Rini. And I hope all your cakes turn out fabulous. And don't forget, you can refrigerate it for up to a week. You can freeze this cake for up to three months in your refrigerator. If you want to have individual pieces, cut them up and then freeze them individual like that. Or if you want the whole cake, freeze the whole cake, uh, airtight, um, you know, put it in plastic wrap, put it in a Ziploc bag, and then uh, just let it come to room temp when you want to eat it. So there you go. Enjoy your Saturday, stay safe, and uh, we will see you again next week where we may be or not be making tiramisu. All right. <laughs> Very exciting. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Mary, as always. And I know. Maybe next week I'll wear an apron. We'll find out. Okay. Bye.